And now back to our local top story. A Texas lawmaker is planning to revive legislation that would allow guns on college campuses throughout the state. It has failed before, but supporters say today's shooting at UT could tip the scale. Josh Hinkle joins us live from UT with an in-depth look at the possibility of such a law. Josh? In 2009, both a House and Senate bill to allow guns on campus actually failed in the Texas legislature. I spoke to the House bill's sponsor today, and he says he's going to try to do this again in the upcoming session. He's going to do this even before the UT shooting today, and now his supporters say he has an even stronger case. That these types of signs actually serve as a magnet for causing these types of attacks to occur. As coincidence would have it, the day John Lott, a leading Second Amendment scholar, was meant to speak to UT students about gun laws, this happened. A shooter opened fire on campus, a place known as a gun-free zone, what Lott calls an open invitation to this kind of attack. If it's the law-abiding good citizens who you disarm relative to the criminals, you can actually have an increase in violent crime rather than a drop. Redirecting his speech off campus, Lott revealed his research shows cities with gun bans are seeing an increase in their murder rates. Shooters face less defense, a reason he says they feel comfortable on campuses as well. <laughs> Masses of university students and faculty from across the state marched in opposition of the last legislative effort to get guns on campus. They might have a similar struggle this session, as similar legislation is expected. I sort of wonder what would happen if additional students had been armed. How would that situation have been made less chaotic if more people had had guns? John Woods was one of those students in protest. He survived the 2007 shooting at Virginia Tech, where he also lost his girlfriend. He says in addition to accidentally harming another innocent victim, more guns could create confusion in a crisis. The police spent a really long time looking for a second shooter. If multiple people had been armed, how would they have known who that second shooter was and who was just a person with a gun? Though only the shooter died in the UT incident, it left groups like Students for Concealed Carry on campus with new hope the future legislation might have a fight. So until uh, you know the state legislature and the school officials start taking steps to make these gun-free zones gun-free and more than name only, they're, they're stacking the odds against concealed handgun license holders who might otherwise be able to defend themselves. And the conversation continues with this story online through our comments section. Will writes, I was at the business school when all this happened today, and if everyone was waving guns around and pointing them at each other, wondering who was the second suspect, many people would have died in the confusion and crossfire. And veteran writes, it was not the first shooting at UT, nor will it be the last as long as the law-abiding are prevented from defending themselves. Now, you can join in on this controversial debate on our website at KXAN.com. Just search for this story in the local news section at the University of Texas reporting live Josh Hinkle KXAN Austin News the group students for concealed carry on campus says there are 24 states that prohibit guns on college campuses 15 states that leave that decision up to the school and only one state Utah allowing guns on campus